Intermediate Algebra Section 9.7 Application of Exponential Functions. In this first example, we'll take a look from the biology world. The science of the deer population in a national park increases at the rate of 3.3% per year. If the size of the current population is 124, find how many deer there would be in six years. Use the formula A is equal to A sub naught times e to the 0.033 t power, where a naught is the current population and t is the time in years to solve. So they're telling us that we have a rate of 3.3%, and if you notice that, that's part of the formula. They're telling us the current population, and they're asking us for a time of six years. So identifying that information, we have current population of 124, they're telling us a time of six years, and they're asking us what will that population grow to if it has an annual rate of 3.3% growth. Using the given formula, we'll replace the variables with the given values. So we have 124 times e to the 0 0.033 times t, which is 6. Simplifying this expression to find our answer, we can take a scientific calculator. Let me slide this over so you can see the, the keys. First, I'm going to simplify the exponent, 0 0.033 times 6 results in a value of 0.198. So we have 124 times e to the 0.198 power. Following order of operations, we'll do our exponent first. And to get to e, that's the inverse operation of natural log. So shift natural log to the 0.198 power times 124, the last operation, is going to give us the population after six years for this deer herd. So 151, again, if we're rounding to the nearest whole number. In this next example from the financial world, when the principal P earns an annual interest rate R compounded yearly, the amount A after T years is given by A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus R raised to the T power. How long will it take? $1,200 to grow to $6,000 at 4% compounded annually. So gathering the information that they were given, $1,200 is what they're initially starting out at. That would be the principal amount. It's growing to an ending amount of $6,000. They're telling us the annual interest rate is 4%, and the question is, how long will it take? So it's T that we are looking for in this particular problem. So plugging those values into the formula, we will have A, we know, would be 6,000 is equal to P, the principal amount, 1,200, times 1 plus the interest rate, and I'm writing that as a decimal, raised to the T power. Our variable is in the exponential position, which means we're going to have to take the log of this equation to get the variable out of the exponent. But in the meantime, let's simplify. First, dividing both sides by 1,200 to get it the variable as isolated as we possibly can. That leaves a 5 is equal to 1,200 is canceling out and adding a 1.04 to the t power. And again, to get an exponent or a variable out of an exponential position, we're going to take the log of each side. Whether that's a common or a natural log, that's totally up to you. Either way would be result in the same value. I'm going to do a common logarithm, and again, when we take the log of a quantity with an exponent, the exponent becomes the coefficient. Next, to get t by itself, all we need to do is divide to undo, or to divide to undo the multiplication. 
these common values in a quotient situation are equal to 1. So we have t is equal to the following expression that we now can grab a calculator to find the value. Because it's log of each of these quantities, we have to take those separately. Log of 5 divided by log of 1.04 is not the same as log of 5 divided by just the quotient. So each one needs to be calculated. I am using common log, so log of 5 has a value of 0.69 and so on, divided by log of 1.04, and tapping the equals gives us a value of 41. So approximately 41 years for this initial $1,200 to grow into $6,000 in of an account that's paying a 4% interest rate annually. We have a lot of times where population will grow exponentially and because of that common application in many, many areas, we have an exponential growth model that looks like the following. P of T is equal to P times e to the kt power, where k needs to be greater than zero. t is the time, and k is our exponential growth. Along with that, we have situations where we talk about doubling time. And doubling time is the amount of time necessary for the population to grow in size. Well, along with exponential growth, we also have exponential decay. And it's very similar to the formula of exponential growth. The final count will be equal to the initial count times e to the negative kt power, where again k must be greater than zero. And along with exponential decay, we have something called half-life. And half-life is the amount of time necessary for half of the quantity to decay. So let's look at an example that deals with that. This problem states, suppose $6,000 is invested in a savings account where interest is compounded continuously at 3% per year. When will the $6,000 double itself? So we're starting out with an initial $6,000. They're asking us when will that amount double? In other words, when will $6,000 turn into $12,000? And the question is when. The other piece of information they're giving us is that rate or gro exponential growth of 3% per year. This falls under the category of exponential growth. It's the doubling time. So we will fill in the following information to this generic form for exponential growth that we just laid out on our formula sheet. Our final dollar amount or doubled amount results in 12,000 is equal to the initial 6,000 times e to the exponential growth rate, which is 0.03 as a percent, or as a decimal equivalent to the percent times t that we're looking for. Our variable is in the exponential position, and to solve for that, we first need to get our exponent by itself. We'll then take the logarithm, but first things first, divide both sides by 6,000. The 12,000 divided by 6,000 leaves a 2, 
the 6,000 over 6,000 is equal to 1, e to the point zero three to the t power. To get the variable removed from the exponent, we need to take a logarithm, and in this case, since our base is e, it's best if we choose to take a common, or a, scratch that, take a natural log of each side. It's going to make our calculation much easier, so I'm going to take the natural log of 2 is equal to the natural log of the quantity 0.03t. The log of a quantity with an exponent, that exponent becomes the coefficient. So we have 0.03t times the natural log of e. Earlier when we worked with natural logs, by definition, ln of e is equal to 1. So this term can be replaced with a 1. That leaves us with natural log of 2 is equal to 0.03t. Solving for d, we'll divide both sides by 0.03. So here's our time in exact answer. But for a decimal equivalency of that, we'll use our scientific calculator to find an approximate time for that doubling. And if you notice the doubling time, and if you work more problems, you'll see that that doubling has this same formula that any time it doubles, your original amount divided into the doubling amount will end up with a 2 equal to e to the this exponential factor is really the only thing that changes from one doubling time problem to another. But to finish off this problem, we're going to take the natural log of 2. So tap the ln of 2. We've got a little glare there. Find its value. Divide it by the denominator of 0 0.03, which results in approximately 23.1 years. An investment of $6,000 should compound to $12,000 if it's compounding continuously at 3% annual rate.